Well, good afternoon. I'm Ken Busby, your cultural czar, member of the board of the Tulsa Symphony Orchestra, and we're here with our musician moment today with Gina Davis, uh, our assistant concertmaster. Hey, Gina, how are you? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. It's good to see you. Me too. Um, so, you know, these musician moments have been great, and we're having a good time doing them, so thanks for taking some time to be with us today uh, to let our Tulsa Symphony family learn more about our musicians and, and you know, have a better connection to the, to the great people we see on stage at concerts. Um, I got to tell you, though, I want to start with, uh, because, because your head's blocking it slightly, and it's perfect, I, want, I, lo I love your setting. Tell me about the, the painting that's right behind you, or the image. I can't quite tell. Okay, well, right behind me is, uh, well, it may have a little glare on it, too. Yeah, we can see it. It's a, um, a photograph that I purchased, uh, well, not the actual photograph, a, a poster. Okay. Etons. Oh, um, nice. National Park. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a summer music festival, and um, I don't know how well you can see them. Pretty, pretty well. But um, I, I play at the Grand Teton Music Festival every summer. Right. And I just I just love this photo. It's... Um, Oh, I'm trying to think when that was taken. That's um, got to be back in the, hmm. Yeah, it, but it's a violinist that was playing out on Jackson Lake oh. in the 1800s, I believe. I, I would say that's got to be late 1800s, I'm guessing. Sorry, I should have done my research before. That's, no, it's great. I, I, but looking at the buildings and everything that I can see, it looks like late 1800s, maybe early 1900s, yeah. but somewhere in there, yeah. Yeah. How um, cool. And how long have, well, you, how long have you done that? Festival since 1991. Wow. Uh, some have gone almost every summer since I started playing. There. So you started when you were like four, maybe five? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I thought, I knew you were a prodigy at all, so yeah, that's good. And uh, how long have you been with the Tulsa Symphony? Um, well, I've been with the Symphony since it started. Right. And uh, and I started playing the Tulsa Philharmonic right. in 1990. Okay. Uh, and that's when I, I originally moved to Tulsa. I'm from New York State originally. Utica, New York, is right. where. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And 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 what what brought you to Tulsa? Well, um, I had well, I first I, I got my uh, bachelor's degree in violin performance at Eastman School of Music. Right. In 1988, and then in 1990, I completed my master's in uh, at University of Michigan. Uh huh. So I was. Uh, it was in May, and I was looking for a job and not sure what I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. The funny thing is, I, I don't remember a feeling of, of panic in any way. But <laughs> well, that's good. Um, I took the for a, a violin section position in, in the Tulsa Philharmonic right. in, in, in May. It was my second actual audition I'd ever taken. Wow. And very, very excited to to get the job. So sure. I wasn't so sure about moving all the way to Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> I, yeah, I was going to ask about that. That was quite a transition, yes. But but you st but you stayed. Yeah, I did. Well, um, it wasn't really my intention. I mean, I, I had planned on taking auditions during that time. Early sure. On, um, but I met my husband shortly after moving here, within a month and a half or so. so. Oh wow. Well, thank goodness, thank goodness for him, because I'm glad we got to keep you, because uh, yeah. we, we, love, we love hearing you play and perform, and, and we love having you part of this, of this family. Um, obviously, with your studies and so forth, uh, violin has always been important to you, was, uh, what, but what drew you to it uh, when you were younger? Well, I grew up in a musical home, a musical environment. My father was a pianist, um, a general music teacher in the, in the public schools, and his parents were both amateur musicians. My grandmother played the piano, and she taught piano lessons, um, and my grandfather was a violinist, and he, he played, and he made instruments, he uh, rehaired bows, he did a lot of just kind of... Uh, um, what, what, just work on, on instruments. Um, sure. It's kind of fun. It's a hobby. Uh huh. Um, and then, um, so all I'm one of six kids. I'm the second of six. Okay. And each of us played the piano at some point in our lives. I started when I was six, and I think my older brother about the same time. I mean, the same age. He started playing. Chris started playing the cello when mm. he was in third grade. Okay. And um, so. Uh, 
then the, so that's when we started the string uh, emphasis in our house. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> when I was in third grade, I had had this idea that I really want to play the flute. Okay. And so, but I walked into my into school one day, and the string teacher came in the room and started talking about the various string instruments. And I thought, oh, I I like the violin. Maybe I want to start playing the violin, and I could. And I, in fourth grade, is when they start the woodwind instruments and kind of uh, woodwind. Sure. Uh, wood press. So I thought maybe I'll start the violin now, and next year I'll play the flute. <laughs> so, uh huh. Uh huh. So that's where it all started. I started playing in in, in public schools. Uh huh. And, and so and so you loved it, and then decided, well, maybe I don't need the flute after all. I really like this violin. Right. Well, actually, I did. I did still want to play a woodwind instrument. Part again, my brother's influence. He was playing the bassoon. He ah. started bassoon in fourth grade, and I thought, oh, maybe I want to play the oboe. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was, I had asked about playing the oboe, and they said, well, right now we don't have an oboe, but when we get one, <laughs> we'll you know. you're the first in line. Okay, got it. So that actually never happened. So I just stuck with piano and violin. Okay, and, but well, you obviously made a good choice because you're you're just excellent, and you can see you can see when you perform how how joyful making music and playing the violin is for you. You can just sense it, you know. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure watching you. Well, uh, uh, do you do any do you do any teaching of students? You do, I don't do. you? Yeah. Private students that I have, have had in my home. Uh, no. Right. <laughs> and how's the virtual teaching going? It, it's going okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, for the most part. I'm, I'm actually hearing uh, from people talk about it that it's working better than they thought it would. Yeah. yeah um, so that's, that's it. And it may actually, I'm wondering if, if art and music in some ways may translate better to the virtual medium than maybe the regular academic classes, just because. I don't know. There are definitely um, things that I, I've, I've, I've learned uh -huh. that I hadn't thought of before. Like, it's just kind of opened up some different ideas yeah, for me. Yeah, neat, neat. And helpful. <laughs> and helpful, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, in in your world, because uh, I know how much rehearsing and practice and all the things you have to do and then teaching, uh, is there such a thing as downtime in your life? Oh, yeah. Uh, and I, I have a lot of other uh, interests. That T I, tell us about some of them. Um, well, I, I love to sew. and uh -huh. I, <laughs> I do a lot of sewing. Also, I I have gotten into fabric dyeing several years ago. I started mm -hmm. doing that uh, partly by the influence of my mother. I, I guess I should say mainly the influence of my mother. Uh -huh. She's artistic. In fact, if you can see the there's a couple paint a um, couple a painting and a collage behind me that uh -huh. my mother also did. Oh, honey, uh, she's uh, she's very artistic. So um, I dye silk scarves and silk fabrics and all all different kinds of fabrics. And, uh, oh, cool. I don't know, of the musicians have actually purchased some of my my things that I've made. Well, and, how uh, neat! And I I like to make jewelry. Um, another one of my passions is baking. I love to bake. Ooh! All right. So uh, now you're <laughs> now you're making me hungry. Um, so what what are your favorite kinds of things to bake? What what well, do you like I to do? I bake bread at least once a week. Okay, so if I so uh, I can put in a request and order and and and, uh, and purchase that. That's awesome. And, and so is my. Unfortunately, she's vegan, so I have to like try to tailor things to her her diet. But um, but overall, the bread is one thing that that's easily made vegan, so that works out well. <laughs> that's neat. Uh, how neat! How neat! Um, wow. Okay. Well, you have a lot of interests. That's really cool. Yeah, and um, also I, I is you know. Since I love the Tetons, I, I love hiking. I like to get outdoors and do that kind of thing. Right, right. Well, hopefully with uh, with our better weather, now we're hitting the spring time, uh, there'll be more time for, for some of that uh, outdoor activity. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. Well, Gina, it's it's been great chatting with you today. Thank you so much. And I know we're going to get to sit back now and enjoy uh, a performance from you. So right. why don't you tell us what we're going to get to hear today? Well, uh, I'm going to be playing the the last moment of the Bach E major violin partita, as I, I think of the key of E major as a very uplifting, joyful key. And this Absolutely. is the G, which is a, a fast-ish dance. And right. uh, I wanted to play something that's kind of, um, kind of joyful and 
Happy. So, so, so we're going to get to move around a little bit while you play, I have a feeling. <laughs> it is <bop. laughs> That's right. It's, it's, it's a natural. It's a natural. So if people want to dance, they can get up and dance and just move with you and, and uh, have a good time. I also, uh, I my brother has recorded all six of the cello suites. Right. And also gotten to hear him perform all six cello suites live um, about two years ago. I don't remember. Hmm. Um, and I just, I've always, I grew up listening to him practicing his Bach on the cello like late at night because he, he would practice pretty well into the night when we were trying to get sleep. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's a, one thing too about being home. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. trying to make my own music. Right. I just to pull out different moments of Bach and, and practice the sonatas and partitas. So nice, nice. Good. Well, yeah, I bet, I bet. Uh, well, we will, uh, we will enjoy hearing that. Thank you so much. And uh, so I'll invite the audience to just sit back now and relax and and uh, continue to enjoy. Gina Davis, it has been great visiting with you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. This has been fun. Yeah, <laughs> and and I'll look forward to seeing you in person very soon. Hopefully. All right. Take care now. I'm going to play the final moment of Bach's E major violin partita, which was written for solo violin in 1720. This moment I'm going to play is a jig, which is a short, fast dance. Thank you. 